Hey guys, Iggy back again with Dragon Blogger. So today I am going to be building a computer for you guys using the Thermal Take Suppressor F51 window case. Seems like a nice case. I haven't built anything in it yet. But uh, let me show you first off everything I'm going to be building with. First off, the Asus Sabertooth Z87 motherboard. And of course you're going to need your tools, screwdrivers, different assorted screwdrivers, my zip tie, my Arctic Freezer 7 Rev2 CPU heatsink. Then back here I have my Kingston HyperX 240GB SSD, my Patriot Ignite 480GB SSD, my EVGA GTX 970 video card. I have here my Intel 4790K CPU, Arctic Cooling MX2 Thermal Paste, my network card, because unfortunately my onboard NIC died. Then I have my Cooler Master 1200 Watt Silent Pro Gold, two opticals, don't hate, three mechanical hard drives for storage, and all my SATA cables, and definitely last but not least, the Thermal Take Suppressor F51. Looks like a sweet case, so uh, let's start the build. First off, when you're building a PC, you're definitely going to need a CPU and a motherboard. So to install the motherboard, first off, push down on this little lever, pull out slightly, and lift it up. Alright, you've just, and if you've noticed, see how this little tray moved? Alright, that's just unlocking it from here. These little teeth lock in under here when it's forward like that. Alright, so then we're going to want to lift this up because that's where we're going to put our CPU. CPU here, you'll notice there is a notch here and a notch right up here. Alright, that is going to match the notch right here and the notch right here. Be very careful to touch these pins. If you bend almost even a single one, or if you bend a single one, you've lost your warranty with the motherboard. That's physical damage. We're just going to lightly drop this in. Again, matching the two little notches. All right, notch here, notch here. You've just installed the CPU. Now we're going to put this little tray down. Slide it. Again, you're going to notice those teeth going under there and then push out and then pull, push down and slide back in. Now it's not going to go anywhere. A heated debate between all types of builders is how do you apply the thermal paste? I've been building for years and my preferred method is one of the simplest methods. Thermal paste here and you're going to want to put maybe the size of a pea, big piece of rice, just right dab in the center All right, wipe off your thermal paste and make sure to put this back on there because if not, thermal paste is going to be sneaking out of there and going everywhere. All right, so now you've just applied thermal paste to your CPU. Now we're going to want to put our CPU fan on. Everybody has a different type of CPU fan, so unfortunately, the one I have, you may not have. Again, this is the Arctic Cooling Freezer 7 Rev 2. This has these little retention mechanisms that you just slide in there. So I am just going to be guiding them into the hole. They come with these little pegs just to make sure that the little frame doesn't go anywhere. All right, so. Push that down. All right, that one's in there good. Number two. Number three. Last but not least, number four. Now, remember, this is going to be holding your CPU fan. This guy right here. 
So you got to make sure it's on there good. What better way? Lift your entire board through it. It's on there good. Put in the CPU fan. Let me turn the board around so you guys can get a better angle. So you'll notice there's a hole here and a hole here. There's also a hole here and a hole here. This will be for your to hold your CPU down. Alright, so then you just lay your fan down on top of that thermal paste. It's a dot, but remember when you lay your fan down, that dot is going to spread throughout the entire CPU. So you don't want to put too much and you don't want to put too little. It's a fine line. The other side I didn't tighten 100% just so that I can get the CPU fan in here nicely. Now that the other one's in there nice and tight, I'll come back and tighten this one up. And now I'll go ahead and put in my memory because when the CPU fan is in there, you see how the memory slots are right here? It makes it difficult to put in the CPU fan, so much so that you see how there's a bracket here? There was one right here as well, but I had to cut it off. Let's go ahead and install some memory. The memory I'm using today is Patriot PV316G160C9QK. This is Patriot's DDR3 1600 MHz RAM. Been using it for years, good stuff. All right. Now, if you try to put in your memory like this, it's not gonna work. Be reason being, see there's a notch right here, there's a notch right here. Just going to want to make sure that the RAM matches up. That one does. And just push down. You'll notice this little peg goes up. Locks into place. And just repeat. RAM is one of the easiest things to install. Another thing, make sure you don't touch these gold contacts. The oils in your fingers will ruin them. Told you, real simple. We've just installed 16 gigs of 1600 mega RAM. We've installed the CPU fan. And let's not forget the heatsink. There's a little notch right here, and then there's a clip right here. So you just match them up. Clips on here. And it clips right over here. Now we're going to want to connect the fan itself to the motherboard. Here is the side of the board that has the pinout for the CPU fans. You'll notice chassis fan 3, CPU optional and CPU fan. Being that this is not an optional fan and this is not a chassis fan, this has got to be a CPU fan. Using deductive reasoning, we'll go ahead and plug in the CPU fan. That's pretty much it. Alright guys, don't get too excited just yet. So all we've done is put the CPU on the motherboard, put the RAM on the motherboard, and put the CPU heatsink fan on the motherboard as well. We still have to put in the SSDs, video cards, the mechanical hard drives, the optical drives, if you have them, and of course the power supply inside of the case. Let's get started on that real quick.